Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the College Board Calculator for SAT, PSAT, and SAT 8.9. Uh, as you can see, it looks like the Desmos calculator. In fact, it's made by Desmos, and it looks like the version you see when you use it online. So just like the any ordinary calculator, you can do uh, addition, uh, subtraction, uh, multiplication, which is done using Shift-8. That's the multiplication, the keyboard shortcut for multiplication. And then you can also do division. So uh, division, you can use the slash key, which is next to my Shift key. Um, and then I, that's how you would divide. Uh, you can access all of these uh, also inside the keyboard, which is in the lower left, and you can do any of these functions here. So along with it being a basic four function calculator, it also has some special, um, some special things you can use to solve problems. So we have 10 questions here to show you some of the things you can do inside the Desmos College Board Calculator. So let's get started. So here in question number one, we have uh, solve the equation. And then they give us sort of a complex equation. It's got some fraction coefficients. But really, all we have to do is type it in, and it will tell us the answer to the equation. So to put a fraction in, we're going to do 2 slash 3. So uh, like 2 divided by 3. Then I'm going to use the right arrow key to get back uh, even, so I'm no longer in the denominator. We're going to uh, type a normal x minus 5 uh, equals. Then we want to do 1 divided by 2. That's going to give us 1 half. Then the right arrow key again, x, and then plus 2. You can see, well, Mr. Mullen, where did the answer go? Well, we just have to zoom out on the, on the, on the graph a little bit, and we can see you're looking for the x-intercept. So the x-intercept here is... You just click on the x-axis and you can see it's 42, 0, which means the answer to this equation is x equals 42. Let's try question number two. Okay, in question number uh, two, we have to solve the system of linear equations. So again, if I open the calculator, you'll see we have a couple lines here. In my first line, I'm going to type the first equation. So we have uh, 5x minus 3y equals negative 1. And you'll see that appears on the graph. I hit enter, and I'm going to enter the second equation. So negative 2x plus 5y uh, equals 8. So now uh, the answer is where these two lines intersect. So I just click the click the point at which they uh, point of intersection, and I can see they intersect at 1 comma 2. So that means the answer here is x equals 1 and y equals 2. Question number three. So in the xy plane, a line with the equation 2y equals c for some constant c intersects a parabola, parabola at exactly one point. If the parabola has the equation y equals negative 2x squared plus 4x, what is the value of c? So again, I'm going to pull, up, pull open the calculator, and I'm going to start with my parabola equation, which was uh, y equals... Now, negative 2x, and then to get the um, exponent, you can either go to your keyboard and press uh, the uh, either one of these, or you can click Shift-6, and that's going to raise my cursor, and now I just type 2, and then the, the um, right key again, the right key, and I'm going to go plus 4x. So now my parabola has been set, and I'm going to um, press enter, and I'm going to insert my linear equation, 2y equals c. Okay, so we can see here that I have a problem, right? It, um, it gave me this triangle with an exclamation mark. It says we only support implicit equations with x and y, so we're missing the x value here. Now, to fix this, let's just add... 0 times x. So it, it, that will uh, fix the problem. Now we have an x and a y. Um, and we didn't really change the value because anything times 0 is 0. And well, what they did is they, they recognized that c is a variable. And we now have a slider. So if I click c here, I have a slider for c. So I can see that it made this, um, this equation right here green. And now, using the slider, it's going to adjust 
um, where 2y equals c is. Now we need this equation to intersect exactly in one place, which would be at the very, at the vertex of my parabola. So I'm going to slide my slider all the way till it's at the top. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make sure we are at one position. And uh, there we have it. We have uh, an equation that intersects at one point. Uh, what does C equal at that point? Four. Question number four. We're given a function, a, a complex function. Uh, I'm going to open my calculator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this complex uh, function um, in exactly as it's listed in the question. So we have f of x equals. Okay, so now to enter this, when whenever we have like a binomial in the numerator of a fraction, you kind of have to set the numerator first. So I'm just going to do part of it, and I'm going to hit the slash key, and I'm going to go, um, I'm going to enter my x shift six, two right arrow minus one, and then I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to finish it. So minus x shift six, two. Now I'm going to go right arrow, right arrow, and I'm going to do plus. And now we're going to start again. I'm going to start x slash uh, 4 minus x shift 6, 2. Now don't worry about this, uh, this function here. We have defined our function. I'm just going to hit um, right arrow, right arrow, enter. And now we want to know what this function um, evaluated for x equals one half. So all we have to do is we click F, or we type F, open parentheses, one slash two, right arrow, close parentheses, and it will evaluate the function. We don't have to worry about any of this graph. It will evaluate the function at F equals, at x equals one half to be negative 2.2. Question number five. What is the distance between points K, negative 9, 8, and L, negative 6, 0? So within the calculator, we'll open up the calculator, we have the option to just find the distance between two points. We start by typing distance, and you'll see that it kind of uh, it, it, it clicks into place. Open parentheses. We're going to open parentheses again, and we're going to type in our first point, negative 9, comma, 8. We're going to close the parentheses, and then we're going to put a comma, open parentheses again. We're going to put our second point, negative 6, comma, 0, close parentheses, close parentheses. And I get the distance to equal 8.54. So here we have, um, it's, we have two whole numbers, 17 and 23. Well, that's not 8.5. Uh, and then we have two radicals. So uh, we just have to evaluate these radicals and see if it equals 8.5. So to do a square root, you can open up your keyboard and you can click the square root button down here, or you can simply type SQRT and then I'm going to type in 73 and there it is 8.54. So we know that square root of 73 is the answer. Question number six. Okay. Question number six, we have um, a um, linear inequality system. So we have two equations, two inequalities, uh, and they want to know which one has the correct shading for this graph. So uh, we're going to open up our calculator, and we're going to type in our inequalities. So we have y, and then I'm going to open up my keyboard, and I can see uh, is less than or equal to uh, 1 divided by 3, right arrow, x minus 3. All right, I'm just going to back up a little bit here so we can see. So it looks like the, we have the line and we have a shaded region. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to do y is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 2. Okay, I'm going to uh, once again close my keyboard here and I'm going to analyze my graph. Now the answer to the, the system of inequalities is where the two shaded regions overlap. So it looks like we have four quadrants, upper right, upper, upper left, uh, lower right, lower left. It looks like lower left is the position in which uh, is the answer to the problem. So now we'll analyze our choices and we can see here 
right here, lower left, C is the option. Question number seven. Question number seven asks, uh, we have a system of linear equations. What, how many solutions does the system of linear equations have? So again, we're gonna open up our calculator. I'm gonna type the first equation in the first box, 2y plus 14 uh, equals x, enter. I'm gonna type my second equation. We have a 4y minus 2x equals negative one, okay? And now I look at my graph here. We can zoom out or in. Uh, and we can see that we have a set of parallel lines and parallel lines in a system of linear equations is a no solution. Now, if the, if the two lines had one intersection, we would have one solution. If one of these was a quadratic and a linear, we could have two solutions. Uh, and then uh, if, just by changing this a little bit, let's see here. Um, no. Nope, there it is. Uh, so just by, so let's say this was the equation and you see how the green line is sitting on top of the blue line, that would be infinitely many solutions. So depending on what uh, feedback you're getting from the graph is what answer choice you'll choose. Question number eight. Given the linear data below, what is the y-intercept of the data set? Okay, let's open up our calculator. So they gave us some data in a table. And if I hit my plus sign over here to the left, I can actually select table and start to input the data. So we have 18, then I'm gonna hit tab, the tab button, 130, tab, 23, tab, 160, tab, 26, tab, 178, All right? Then um, I'm going to move down to the second. Now, now we've established our data, our linear data. Uh, we can calculate the equation of this table data uh, using um, Desmos. So we, well, first we're going to do something called Y sub one. So we want to get it to look like this right here. And to do that, we click, we type Y and then shift subtract. Shift subtract, and that's going to get us our cursor lower. One, right key. E, uh, instead of equals, we're going to do shift and then the button next to the number one. That's going to give us a, a little um, squiggle, or that's the approximate uh, symbol in math. Uh, then M, and then we need X, shift, subtract, one, right key, plus B. Okay, so Y is approximate to MX plus B. And uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, they give us the M and the B value. We could also look at the graph, but they, they, they give us the M and the B value. We are looking for the Y-intercept, which is the B value, which means my Y-intercept is 0, 22. Question number nine. So here we have uh, an, uh, an equation set up as a proportion. So if you need to solve a proportion on the standardized test, the calculator will do it for you. So you hit the calculator button. And once again, uh, we're gonna have to establish the numerator and then go back and finish the numerator. So we have X slash five, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit up and I'm gonna do plus one up here and then equals. And then I'm gonna establish the X again slash three, and then I'm going to go back to the numerator and do the minus three. And just like the equation that we did in number one, we're going to look for the X intercept, which is nine. So nine is my answer. Last question, everyone. Question number 10. In question number 10, they give us an expression, 468 minus 6G. The volume of a rectangular birthday cake is 468 cubic inches. The expression above models the amount of cake remaining in cubic inches. After serving G guests, how much cake in cubic inches would remain after 50 guests? Now, this is a, a somewhat easy expression, right? We would sub 50 in for G and just solve. But let's say you had a more complicated expression. Here's how you could do it in the calculator. So the first thing is we're going to 
type our expression into decimals. We're going to do 468 minus 6g. Now, here's the problem: is they want us to um, they want us to add a slider for g, and that's not necessarily what we want. So we got to remember that uh, Desmos uh, has a um, they want to see x and y, an input of x and output of y. So if we do a couple of things, one, if we change our g to an x, you can see that we get um, the uh, line function because what they're assuming, they're assuming that it's y equals. Okay. So now once we have once we have our expression written, what I can do is I can evaluate anything I any number I want. And we do this by clicking the um, widget here. And then I want to click the table function. And what's this what's this going to do is it's going to give me a table of values for the expression that I inputted. Now, I need to know what happens when x equals 50 or g in our case, right? Well, they don't go that far, right? It goes from negative 2 to positive 2. But I can come down here and I can put an input any number I want. So if I want to know what, uh, what the output is for 50, you just type 50 in and it gives you an output of 168. And that's the answer to this question. All right. So uh, I'm sure um, there's uh, many other things that you can do, but make sure to take advantage of the tool that they're letting you use on the test. Um, and this is some of the things that you can do. So, of course, if you have any questions, um, you, can ask, um, you can ask me in class or send me an email.